Hi everybody, it's Dina, and today I want to demonstrate a little bit of quick journaling. So something that is low investment, something that is low stress, and something that I was able to execute in a short span of time. So what I'm using are three tags, and I haven't used tags in a bajillion years, but I wanted to get them out again because I think they're really flexible and really useful in a journaling practice. I'm using three of them, and I'm treating them all the same way in different, um, in different iterations, so different color palette, same technique. Part of the benefit of this is that by doing it three times over, I find that I'm able to lock the technique into my data banks in a way that I can't if I just do it once. If I just do one of these, I will absolutely look at it six months from now or whatever and forget how I got that result. While doing it three times, I'm more likely to remember what I did. So I used a stamp that I made by just drawing a daisy kind of flower onto a thick piece of foam with a ballpoint pen, really etching those lines in. And I have stamped that onto these backgrounds using Blick Matte Acrylic in white. I'm going into the spaces between my acrylic stamping with Distress Stain. And that was another little challenge I gave to myself was let's use some materials that have just been sitting and that's one of them. And it's been sitting so long that I forgot that distress stain on plain paper will not travel with water. It just sort of stays put. So I'm trying to push it around with my water brush and you can see as I've discovered that it won't go anywhere. Now, the beauty of Distress Stain is that it will travel on top of this dried acrylic. So once my acrylic is dry, I'm able to add more Distress Stain to it. And now I can take my water brush and you'll see it just travels around beautifully and it sinks into all those little nooks and crannies of texture. So this is what I was hoping I would get would be some kind of acrylic paint-based resist and as you see it works really nicely. So I'm getting that lace-like texture from just this very little simple 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 little homemade stamp, just a drawing of a flower pushed into one of those thicker pieces of craft foam. I really like the color of these and another thing I wanted to do was just reintroduce some deep saturated bright color to my to my work and to my art practice and I really have been working in neutral colors almost exclusively lately so for me here's this really low risk low stress way to play with saturated color without it necessarily having to be absorbed into my sort of more serious outward facing body of work, right? I get to have that moment and play. And I'm just using Blick Matte Acrylic now in a coordinating color with all three of these tags around the edge. Painting it exclusively around the edge like this, what that does is it shores up the outer edge of these tags a little bit and it integrates with the color the color story that I've already put down and it just um, it feels a little messy without it and it feels like it closes things off officially and it just kind of squares up that edge and cleans up that idea a little bit so I just I think this little bit of paint just partially applied to the tag helps integrate that background and flatten it out a bit and I really like that result. The Blick Matte Acrylic is just a really nice, cost-effective, uh, craftish paint that still has a really good pigment load, so I do like using that quite a bit. And as you see, that was really a fast way to generate these backgrounds, and it's a nice way also because it can be broken down even more into smaller steps that are um, steps that you can assimilate into your busy schedules very easily. I want to do a flower motif just because that's 
sort of my um, it's my default zone for doodling. I can draw florals and botanicals without thinking about it. And in the interest of keeping this just really sort of gut level, uh, simple and easy, that's the, the imagery that I gravitated towards here. So I'm just suggesting places where florals will go. So um, different scale, different relationship of shapes, not too many so that it doesn't get too crowded and just putting a couple of these suggestions down ahead of time with the intention of enhancing all of these with ink and line work. And while I let these dry, I usually just take my excess paint and get it onto a larger surface, like a journaling background, so that I can you know, both conserve the paint and also have some marks to respond to later on. So I'm letting these dry, and once they are totally dry, I'm able to draw on them with Posca marker or ink or something opaque that will uh, just sort of float on top of those layers of ink and paint. And here I'm using opposite color palette, um, just really want to keep things bright and upbeat and also very, very easy for me to draw very easy for me to draw without thinking, without worrying, and without overthinking. You just really like tags as a way to experiment without consequence. So even in an art journal where you know that it's meant for you to play around and you know that it's really meant for you to be yourself and not worry about external pressures, even in that situation, sometimes I feel like I find that my journal is a little bit much. My sketchbook is a little bit much. It's a little more pressure to, than I want to deal with on a particular day. Maybe I'm just, you know, not in a good place or maybe I'm in a good place and I just don't have the time to really, um, you know, dig into things. And I still just want to play and express that feeling of joy and not have to worry about any of the outcomes. And what happens is a tag is so small that it just allows me to do that. So there are different strategies for um, doodling and drawing as that top layer on top of mixed media work. Here, you'll see that I'm just doodling this black frond and flower without visual information underneath it suggesting what to do. So I drew that as if I were drawing it on a blank piece of paper. There's no um, shape under it telling me where to go. There's no suggestion of where it should point or how it should be. Now the opposite of that is what I'm doing here, which is staying within the confines of this sort of blue-black circle and I'm responding to the marks inside that circle and in the context of that circle. So that's a different strategy. You'll see here again, I'm responding to the information under me, whereas here I'm using this green marker and I'm just going outside that established information. I'm deciding consciously not to respond to the marks that are underneath the thing that I'm drawing. And I think that the most uh, the most successful pieces of this nature combine both of those strategies. So when I look at um, different sketchbooks that have this kind of ink drawing over a painted uh, textured background, I look for both of those kinds of drawings. And when I say I look for it, it's subconscious. I don't consciously like go around critically looking at it, but I know that my eye likes seeing both of those things. 
So here again, I'll demonstrate. So this first layer of red petals goes right to the edge of that brownish orange circle, and it just kind of stays within those confines. And then I choose to extend past it significantly and draw it in its own way. And I find that that's a much more sophisticated image that that little floral element is much more sophisticated, I think, than it would be if it just stayed within the space of that suggested orange blob. So here, you know, just kind of playing with that idea of drawing outside the lines and outside the perimeter of things is really, it, this is a great way to explore that because these are so small and because small spaces really allow you to think about those compositional kind of things without a lot of pressure and without a lot of overwhelm from having to work with a large sheet of paper. So that's another advantage, I think, of this, these tags, the tag format. I really wound up liking what I got way more than I thought I would in this case. I didn't expect these to come out well enough that I'd even want to keep the video, let alone share it or, um, or keep the tags or do anything with them. I thought these would be throwaways, but I really liked what I got. I think I'm ready for some color again. I added um, some little phrases from the Tim Holtz chit chat stickers that I have and um, sort of word art sticker kind of things. Not something I really gravitate towards a lot or collect a lot of. Um, you know, I have some scrapbooking type supplies, but not a lot of them. And I tend not to connect with that stuff. But these, I, th this particular set, the chit chat stickers, I do like because some of them, I think they just kind of delve into some areas that I do connect with a little more. They speak to me a little more. And so I did um, Courage, Hope and Adventure, which are not like radically unusual uh, sentiment stickers, you know, but for whatever reason, they just kind of worked for me and I wanted to um, include them into this. And it, I felt like they kind of finished these pieces out a little bit on their own merit. It. And I used the Distress Stain again to just highlight these stickers going around the edge with a very thin detail brush. And I wound up wanting to actually journal about these ideas on the back, and I'm not, I often neglect the journaling part of art journaling too, so that's kind of exciting that they pushed me in that direction. So I did some writing about just adventure and hope and courage and sort of where, where I sit with those concepts lately, and um, just very sort of honest dump on the other side of these in marker. And, um, to finish these, I wanted to add just a little bit more brightness and play, so I finger painted in just a little bit of fluorescent pink paint at the very end, and I think that really actually adds a little bit of shine and, and uh, play to these that I think just works beautifully. So um, there it is. That's just a very fast bit of tag journaling that I did. And I think I may go on to make a pocket in one of my journals where I can just tuck these in and do a little bit of that um, kind of card and pocket journaling in my, in my um, delusions. So I may do a video about that. I hope you've enjoyed this and you can like, comment, subscribe below. And I'd love to see if anyone else is kind of reviving the tag. It's been a while since I've seen a lot of people using those. So um, yeah, I hope you've had fun and I can't wait to see you in the studio next time. Till then, take care.